Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. In this video, we're going to look at what is neurodegeneration. So neurodegeneration is a huge topic, one which affects many of us or people that we know, and also one that's still being heavily researched and there's still much we're trying to understand. But to break it down into a short video, um, I'm going to split it up into four different sections. Firstly, I'll give you a definition of neurodegeneration. Then I'll introduce you to the two major types of neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Then we'll look at what are the causes of neurodegeneration. And lastly, we'll look at where are we at currently with research and what we've still got left to uncover. So how can I summarise neurodegeneration in a sentence? So to give a definition, neurodegeneration is the progressive loss of the structure or function or both of neurons and even the death of neurons over time. So it's pretty much progressive disease, which is why we see the symptoms in people who are much older and is why aging is one of the major causes for neurodegeneration. And so neurodegeneration encompasses a diverse range of different disorders with their own range of symptoms. Obviously the most common one that people think of or associate with neurodegeneration is loss of memory. So neurodegenerative diseases are now common in society but the most common of these is Alzheimer's disease. Currently, 47 million people are predicted to have Alzheimer's disease, but by 2050, this number is expected to rise to 135 million people. And with the cost per person for treatment being $30,000, this can toll up to a total of $4 trillion by 2050, which is a huge amount of money. So Alzheimer's disease and the progressive decline in memory, which ultimately results in the loss of daily function and death, but is characterised by the presence of amyloid beta plaques and neurofibrillary tau tangles. And so these are protein aggregates that either accumulate extracellularly or inside cells. And the causes for Alzheimer's disease could be familial, there could be a genetic inheritance of mutations in certain genes that predispose a person to getting the disease, or it could be sporadic, for which there are many different reasons that we aren't entirely certain of at the moment as to what is causing the disease to start and initiate. And so you can see in this figure the effect that having Alzheimer's has on the brain. You see the loss of neurons and the loss of matter in the brain. And in particular, an area that is um, targeted in Alzheimer's disease seems to be the hippocampus. Why this is the case, why the hippocampus is more vulnerable than other areas of the brain, isn't quite fully understood yet, but this is what we can observe at the moment. And so the second most common neurodegenerative disease is Parkinson's disease. And so unlike Alzheimer's disease that's characterised by the presence of uh, aggregates of amyloid beta and tau, Parkinson's disease is characterised by the presence of Lewy bodies. And the symptoms that result from Parkinson's disease include things like rigidity, arresting tremor, and these are all defects in the production of movement. And part of the explanation for this is the localization of where the disease causes damage in the brain. And so part of this damage is the loss of dopamine, which is the neurotransmitter that transmits the signals between the neurons in the region of the brain um, called the basal ganglia and to be more precise um, this is in the striatum and the substantia nigra pars compacta as you can see here. All right so I slightly already mentioned this but what are the actual causes of neurodegeneration? So you can split the causes into two main categories so you have familial uh, causes and so this is when there are genetic mutations where somebody is more likely to have the disease because of this mutation Alternatively, the other cause is sporadic. There's no apparent reason, as far as we're aware, as to why that person would get the disease. This could be due to their lifestyle, there could be environmental factors, but also genetic factors, um, slight genetic mutations that aren't particularly in the genes of main knowledge, but in other genes that contribute in kind of unknown ways at the moment to trigger this disease from, ha from to happen. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is there could be mutations in unexpected genes or genes that we didn't think would be causing the condition or mutations that when only present with other mutations in different genes can cause an effect, <laughs> if that makes any sense. 
But regardless if we consider it to be familial or sporadic, the key questions we want to know the answer to are how can we prevent the disease from initiating and progressing uh, to further damage? And so how can we actually cure it? And so if we're going to be able to cure these diseases, we need to understand what causes the disease in the first place. And so a big clue comes from the genes that are mutated in the familial conditions. So in Alzheimer's disease, we can see mutations in patients in the gene APP, which encodes the amyloid beta protein, which is the aggregate I mentioned earlier. There are also other genes, so we have APOE4 and presenilin 1 and 2. And so understanding the, the function of the different genes that have mutations can help us to understand what causes the disease in the first place and then to come up with rational solutions and targets for treatment. And so we can say the same about Parkinson's disease. So one of the proteins that are found in these Lewy bodies is alpha-synuclein. And this protein is one of the proteins that gets has genetic mutations that are seen in the familial types of the disease. And it is currently thought that the mutations cause the protein to be more likely to aggregate. And so this could be an explanation as to how the disease starts in the first place. However, it's the sporadic diseases that can often be more interesting as often sporadic cases are things that we think that we can prevent, but that's not always the case. However, there are currently some kind of hot topics in terms of the causes of sporadic cases of neurodegeneration. And so these include things like inflammation, how that happens is unclear at the moment. There are things such as how much sleep you get. So the glymphatic system is a system in the brain that kind of cleans out the brain. And this is a process that definitely increases when you sleep. And so having more sleep allows the brain to clear out potential aggregates that could be triggering and causing the symptoms of the diseases. The last hot topic at the moment is the microbiome and how bacteria could actually be triggering the disease. And so one interesting article that came out earlier this year was about gum disease and the link between that and Alzheimer's disease. So yeah, be brushing tonight, I will be. <laughs> but my point is, is that there's loads of exciting research that's currently being undertaken to understand neurodegeneration, in particular because it's going to affect so many of us. And so by understanding the diseases and the causes, we can better design rational treatments. And so the key thing with neurodegeneration is you seem to accumulate bad but also the loss of good. So we accumulate these aggregates and then we lose neurons. And one key emerging feature amongst all neurodegenerative diseases seems to be protein aggregation. And so finding ways to prevent or to break down these aggregates is one way we could treat the diseases in the future because at the moment there are no cures. But with current research we are heading in the right direction. So I hope that this was a good introduction to what neurodegeneration is and where we're at currently in science.